Hello, Strategic Management students. Fred David here. We're working our way through the textbook. Today we're on chapter six. So happy to get to chapter six. It's one of the most important chapters in the book. In the 17th edition, it starts on page 162. And in this video segment, I wanna speak with you a few minutes about SWOT analysis and space analysis. It's gonna be two of the five matching tools introduced in chapter six that companies and organizations are using to help formulate an effective strategic plan. Of course, I'm gonna need you to include in your comprehensive strategic plan for your project company, I'll need you to include both a SWOT analysis and a space matrix space analysis. And I expect you'll probably use the template to do that, that Excel-based strategic planning software that thousands of businesses, to be honest with you, are actually using to do strategic planning. It, 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 it follows the same framework, uh, concepts, tools, techniques in the textbook. So it's a wonderful tool to use. I'm sure you're using it at the author website there, strategyclub.com. I see on page 64 and 65 in chapter six of the 17th edition, it, 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 it illustrate, illustrates for you a strategy formulation analytical framework. And I see there, there are three stages. You see that the input stage, the matching stage, and the decision stage. So as I'm looking at that figure 6-2 on page 165, I'm realizing that there are three analytical tools that comprise the input stage for companies and businesses as they develop your strategic plan. And you've already, you've already completed these at this point in the course, the IFEM, the EFEM, and the competitive profile matrix. You see that there, that's the input stage called that because that that provides the input information that a business or organization needs to actually develop a strategic plan to generate strategies, which is what this chapter six is going to do. Chapter six is going to generate for you alternative strategies that would be great for the organization to pursue. But as you know, no organization or company has enough resources, cash or people to do everything that would benefit them. So in this chapter, we'll see how, how do you decide among many strategies that, that could benefit the firm. And one way we're gonna do it, I see on page 165 in this figure 6-2 is the matching stage. You see these five uh, analytical tools here, SWOT matrix, space matrix, Boston Consulting Group matrix, IE matrix, that's internal external matrix, and a grant strategy matrix. So in this chapter six, we'll look at those five matching tools. Why matching? Matching because we're, we're deploying our strengths against to take advantage of opportunities. In other words, we're gonna be matching our internal and external factors. It's the same thing an athletic team does. Let's say a football team, they're gonna use their strengths to try to capitalize on what they perceive to be shortcomings or weaknesses on the, on the other team. And businesses do the same thing. So there's a right way to do strategic planning, folks. Please, please understand that. And to be honest with you, it's illustrated on page 165 in this figure 6-2 that we're talking about. There's one, one stage three method there, tool, technique, business are using. It's called the Quantitative Strategic Planning Matrix, QSPM. So here in chapter six, we're, we're eventually going to look at, at, at the stage three QSPM. That's the only decision-making tool we're really going to be going through here in chapter six, where we'll actually make the decision between two or more uh, strategies that, that could benefit the firm. So let's move on to the SWOT. The SWOT matrix I see on page 167, SWOT matrix, this is the most widely used strategic planning matrix of all that we'll use. I think the most, it's, it's the most widely used because to be honest with you, there are no numbers. It's conceptually simple. It lends itself to a brainstorming session where you can meet with your top managers, top executives, and go through what do you consider to be the firm's major strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, and what strategies would be most appropriate given those underlying factors in your best view. So SWOT matrix is introduced here on page 167. I, I see one illustrated on page 168, a SWOT matrix. So it's a, I see that for a particular firm here, retail computer company or store, small business, I see their strengths, weaknesses listed. I see their opportunities, threats listed. 
And I see what's called on page 168, SO strategies. Okay, that's gonna be the strength opportunity strategies. Notice there are three of them there in this figure 6-3. So I'll need you to develop something like this and using the template and present this or provide this, include this in your, your word file for your comprehensive strategic plan. You'll need to include a SWOT matrix for your, for your project company. In addition to SO strategies there, I see WO strategies, that's weakness opportunity. In other words, looking at their, the weaknesses versus the opportunities, it's probably gonna be worth considering these four strategies that I see listed there. In fact, the rationale is indicated in parentheses. You see at the end of each strategy, for example, WO strategy number one there in figure six, three, is to purchase land and build a new store. So you see the parentheses W202. So if you look at weakness number two and opportunity number two, that, that kind of gives rise to thinking this firm probably should consider purchasing the land and building a new store. And so similarly, we have in the SWAT matrix ST strategies. I see on page um, 168, we have WT strategies. WT are defensive oriented things. That means looking at our weaknesses and our external threats. The, this company, this business should consider the two strategies mentioned there. Hire two new cashiers or install new carpet, paint and bath. A bathroom. So, and you see the parentheses, the rationale, the rationale. So I always want you to, you should always include the, the rationale at the end of these strategies, as I see on page 168. So the swap matrix, like I say, conceptually simple, the most widely used of all, lends itself to brainstorming, generates alternative strategies. And some of these strategies in the swap matrix will, will, will eventually make it to a recommendations page. You understand that's probably the most important page in your, your strategic plan. It's going to ultimately be a recommendations page with, with associated costs for each strategy or recommendation summed up to some amount of money needed. And so these strategies, therefore, in a SWOT matrix, like the WOST and WT, need to be stated in specific enough terms that if you needed, if it does make it to the recommendations page, you could assign a dollar amount about how much you think this thing would cost. For example, you wouldn't want to have a strategy here on page 68 as an SO strategy. You wouldn't want to say just to do some market development. You remember those generic terms in the previous chapter five? Ge market development was one of them. That means geographic expansion. So here, instead of just putting market development, you would want to say build 36 new stores across Europe in the coming three years and 10 stores in Australia. Or whatever, you, whatever you're doing there, perhaps build a new manufacturing plant, plant in Brazil. So whatever your market development strategy would be, that's what you'd want here. So you're gonna avoid, you're gonna avoid vagueness. Remember in, in doing strategic planning in general and certainly in developing your comprehensive strategic planning uh, project as you're doing this semester, vagueness, vagueness is disastrous. We're, we're, we're gonna to try to steer clear of that. Okay, so, so that in a nutshell is the SWOT matrix. Um, it, it, it's very important strategic management technique and tool. If you've ever been exposed to strategic planning in a company, probably, probably SWOT, SWOT analysis is one that you would have been commonly exposed to. And hopefully after this course, you'll be able to provide major direction for whatever organization you ever become affiliated with in terms of how they would do any strategic planning. You could provide some guidance, suggestions, input, that I think would be valuable, valuable. Okay, let's talk about the space matrix that stands for strategic position and action evaluation. It's another matching tool. Remember there were five, five tools here we're gonna to use to generate alternative strategies by matching external with internal factors. Space is one of them. Okay, along with SWAT, BCG, IE, and the GRAND. So here in chapter six, we're in chapter six, we'll, we'll be looking at five, uh, matching tools and the template is going to is going to take care of all five of these for you now as you well know with the template it doesn't go out and do the research or anything like that but it will handle the mechanics of these uh, matrices in terms of drawing arrows or vectors or quadrants and and there'll be some hints there on how to how to use the template to do this to develop a space matrix so i see a space matrix illustrated on page 170 i see that there are four axes 
of FP, financial position, off at the top, off to the right, industry position, IP, uh, down to the bottom, stability position, SP, and off to the left, comparative position. So basically, this analysis, this space analysis, is going to get you to ask you to rate your company on these four dimensions. For example, financial position, the one up running to, towards the top on a one to seven scale with seven being wonderful. Do you, would you say your company is a, a, a one, two, three, four, five, six or seven based on their financial condition? And I see on page 171, with regard to financial position, we're talking about things like return on investment, leverage, liquidity, working capital, and your judge be, best judgment, would a one be, would it be terrible? Uh, would a seven be that the company's doing wonderful on these financial dimensions? In other words, you rate them. And you're gonna rate them on each of these four dimensions here, FP, IP is the overall industry. How, how is the industry performing? What, what type of outlook? Is it a promising outlook for the industry? In specific, I see IP on page 171, the natural variables you would rate your company on, things like that. Growth potential, profit potential, financial stability of the industry. So in the space matrix, you'll be rating your company on their financial position, rate the industry on how promising it is going forward. Off to the left, I see competitive position, CP. So versus, versus your major rival or major two rival firms, how would you describe your firm's competitive position? And in particular, specifically, I see on page 171, I need you to rate your company based on their market share, their product quality, their product life cycle, their customer loyalty, their capacity utilization of their manufacturing facilities and variables like that. Uh, you compare, and, and, and on the CP, we're gonna again, we're gonna use a one to seven scale all the way on this space matrix. But one important aspect of this, I need to make sure you're aware of as you read this, a minus seven, on the CP axis is not good. Minus one is wonderful. So if on relative to your rival firms in terms of competitive position, if you think your, your company is the leader or doing fantastic, it would, you would rate them something like a minus one or minus two, okay? And then the, the bottom axis on this space amount analysis is a stability position. Folks, this goes from very favorable, I mean, very stable, like a minus one or minus two to very unstable like a minus six or minus seven on this XP axis. So I need you to rate, actually the industry your company competes primarily in, in terms of, is it more stable like a food industry or is it more unstable like a high tech, high tech industry with product life cycles being a matter of weeks or months instead of years. So specifically on page 171 for, for, the, for the SP axis, I see things you would, include in your rating of your company and industry. Technological change, rate of inflation, demand variability, uh, ease, of, ease of entry or exit into the market. I mean, if firms are coming and going quite often in the, in the industry, that helps to make it unstable. And remember this XPX is going from very stable, minus one, minus two, to very unstable situation, minus six, minus seven. So I see on page 170 with the space matrix, in each quadrant there, strategies are suggested that would be best for your company to pursue depending on, on where, where your vector falls. So when you, when you have a chance to look at this space matrix in detail, you'll see we're gonna add the two, the two numbers on your x-axis, add the two on your y-axis, and we're gonna end up with a vector that'll go into one of these four quadrants. In fact, I see on page 172, the four quadrants being the upper right, that would be aggressive, you understand? Um, an axis coordinate, something like plus four, plus four, as I see on page 172, or even a plus one, plus five, that would still be in the aggressive quadrant. So this is, this is saying what, what, what strategy, this is suggesting to you based on the quadrant that your, your firm is in, what strategies going forward would, would likely be most effective to pursue or to include in your recommendations page. On page 172, I see if your vector, let's, let's say, goes into the upper left, we're going to name that the conservative quadrant. It means don't stray too far away from what you're already doing really well. Be fairly conservative. Nothing, nothing outlandish, probably. No diversification, for example. 
And so we have suggestions there. So each of these five matching tools, please understand, the space, the SWAT, the BCG, the IE, and the grant, each will recommend their own set of alternative strategies that probably would be good, good to consider going forward. Okay, so we don't blindly go with any one. We use five of these matching tools. And I think that's one of the real strengths, to be honest with you, of the textbook here in this, in this part here in chapter six. So I see on page 172, if you go in the lower right, we're gonna call that the competitive quadrant. It means do things like perhaps pursue horizontal integration, some form of that. And remember once we talk about a particular company like Kellogg or, or Hershey or m and Mars or Nestle or Adidas, what, what, are, what firm are we actually talking about acquiring here? We don't leave it at just horizontal integration. Okay, so we wanna be specific. I, I see the lower left quadrant is in the defensive quadrant. This is gonna be things like retrenchment, divestiture, liquidations, maybe some type of diversification. So that's what we're after with the space matrix. We, we need to determine which of these quadrants does the vector for our company go into. And the template is gonna help you do that. I'm looking forward to seeing your space matrix in your Word file for, for your, you know, as a part of your comprehensive uh, strategic plan that you'll be uh, revealing soon, soon for your coming. In fact, I see one of these uh, space analysis worked out for you on page 174. This is for Facebook, for the company Facebook recently used this. And they determined that their, the vector for their, their company for Facebook goes in the upper right quadrant and actually has a quadrant of 0.8 and 3.6. So that means they need to be aggressive with what strategies they're pursuing. And, and then specifically, I would include right below my space matrix, my space analysis in the, my project word file, exactly what that probably would be for Facebook. You, you might list a, a company or two that they should consider acquiring or to what extent should they be expanding operations globally and in what particular countries and in what manner. So in other words, the space, like the swap matrix, is going to generate some alternative strategies, then you're going to want to state them in specific enough terms that if they indeed make it to your recommendations page, you could assign a cost value to them, an estimated cost value to them. So steer clear of vagueness in this process here. Okay, that's what you want to try to do. So that's what, that's what I want to introduce in this first segment here in chapter six. I love chapter six. I hope you're going to see how how important it is in developing an effective strategic plan. And, and just, just keep in mind, having an effective game plan, if you will, or strategic plan is gonna, re, gonna provide tremendous competitive advantages for a company uh, against rivals that, to be honest with you, are trying to put them out of business every day. I mean, most Walgreens I know of, for example, have a CVS across the street uh, trying to put them out of business. So a good game plan is by, gonna be essential for success. And so let's stop in this segment with on here on page 74. And on our next segment, segment here in chapter six, we'll pick up here with the Boston Consulting Group matrix, a fantastic uh, portfolio matrix coupled with the IE matrix. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you for right now and pick up in a few minutes with, uh, with the Boston Consulting Group matrix. And uh, we're gonna end on page 174 in chapter, chapter six of the 17th edition with this video segment. And we're gonna pick up out on page 174 with our next segment. Thank you, take care, uh, good to see you. And thank you for falling in love with strategic management if that, if that turns out. Appreciate it, good to see you.